Hello, welcome to the Thursday, July 11th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from London, England. In yet another sign of SMB version 1 going away, the latest preview release of Samba, Samba 4.11, has disabled SMB version 1 by default. With Samba being an open source implementation of SMB that is often used on Linux systems, it was sort of one of the holdouts when it came to SMB version 1 and one of the reasons that some organizations still keep it enabled, in particular since many network storage devices are using Samba. Now, Samba, of course, has supported newer versions of SMB for a while, but has kept SMB version 1 enabled, even though Windows has further and further moved away from it. Also, with this latest update, the Samba team is requesting feedback regarding the complete removal of SMB version 1 from its code, and it is requesting that users who require SMB 1 support will please file a bug report. And remember how about a week ago I mentioned that public key servers have issues with spam signatures. The problem here was that individuals are downloading popular keys from these key servers, signing them, then re-uploading them with their signatures and this way attaching thousands of signatures, which then in turn can lead to a denial of service condition if someone happens to download this key and import it into their key ring. Well, to respond to this problem, the latest version of GNU PG version 2.2.17 will have a new option, self 6 only that is enabled by default to no longer import any signatures from public key servers. Instead, only the own self signature of the key will be imported. So in some ways, uh, this is a big move away from the web of trust that is really sort of the foundation of uh, the idea of PGP. Instead of having a small number of certificate authorities like we do have for TLS, uh, for example, the idea here was that anybody signs anybody's key that they are trusting and by doing so, we essentially built this web of trust that allows us to verify if a key is authentic. Even though people had, for example, key signing parties at security events and the like, uh, this idea, however, really never sort of has scaled uh, to a level where it would support a larger sort of global key infrastructure as was originally envisioned. And with this latest change, I guess uh, this sort of puts somewhat a death nail into the idea of the web of trust. And then we got another variety of ransomware going after network storage devices, a normally calls uh, this particular strain the Echo Array ransomware, and it appears to be going after QNAP network storage devices. What's not really clear is how the ransomware actually ends up on the device, but it looks like these attacks are somewhat more targeted. So it's not one of these bots that automatically spreads and looks for default passwords and the like, even though some users apparently reported seeing some failed login attempts prior to infection. Also interesting that this is yet another example of malware written in Go. So just as a precaution, make sure that first of all, your QNAP storage devices are fully patched, that you do have a strong password, and then please do not expose these devices directly to the internet. If you are affected by this particular malware, then keep in mind that QNAP devices do have snapshot features and the like that may help you recover some of the content if you had them enabled. Also QNAP has some help pages to hopefully assist you in recovering some of your files. 
Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.